Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Makalov, and today we're going to take a look at quite a curious vehicle. The kind of car that was always behind the, behind the scenes, under the radar. It was always lurking all around us. Most people would confuse this with a regular Sonata, but it was always, for the longest time, this car was there, but we never quite paid it enough attention. I wonder why. Today we're going to take a look at a 2015 Kia Cadenza. And since y'all loved that Outlander ES review, base trim as well. How about that? Let's get into it. Under the hood, you'll find the Kia's 3.3 liter Lambda V6 pushing out 293 horsepower and 255 pound feet of torque. It's paired to the front wheels, also paired to a six speed automatic transmission that is very lazy. Um, in a way, this engine is a precursor to the Stinger's engine, minus the turbos and most of the fun. Um, it has just enough grunt and just enough power to get you up to speed on the highway and overtake and to have a little bit of fun but it's not going to let your socks on fire. Okay, I think I'm gonna spend the uh, rest of this review in this interior under the AC, so I do apologize uh, about the noise of the AC. I also apologize if I'm a sweaty, disgusting mess. Uh, it is August in Toronto, so it's either raining or it's 30 plus degrees Celsius outside, so it's just unpleasantly hot. But let's look at the outside, let's look at the exterior of the car. Visually, the Cadenza is not a bad looking car. Um, I quite like it, and I think it looks pretty good for what it is. Um, I do wish that it was a bit more striking. I do wish that it differentiated itself a bit more from the Sonata and the other uh, the other cars in the Kia lineup. Um, I am sure if you drive this down the street, most people will just assume this is another Sonata, but it isn't. However, it is also important to know that this is not a luxury car, because as soon as you classify it as a luxury car, you have to put up or shut up. Um, so Kia classifies this as a premium car, premium sedan. Um, it really occupies that nice niche in between the Accord and Camry and the Lexus ES, right? It's not quite on the Lexus or Acura TLX and RL level, but it is just, just a little bit below, but it's nicer than your Camry. Um, it really rivals with the Ford Taurus, the Avalon, the Buick LaCrosse. That being said, it does offer some really cool features of a luxury car uh, for uh, not a luxury price. Except this is a base car, as already mentioned. That means it does not have cold seats. It does not have electronic parking brake. It does not have that beautiful LED screen in the gauge cluster. It does not have heated steering wheel. It does not have the panoramic roof. It does not have a uh, smart cruise control. <laughs> it does not have a lot of the things that you would want out of a sedan like this. There's a quite a big difference in the price between the premium and the base. Uh, the base was starting somewhere around 37,995 and premium was closer to 43 to 45 thousand dollars depending obviously I'm sure depending on the dealerships etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's a bit of a uh, there's, there's, there's around a seven thousand dollar difference but you really get so much for that seven thousand dollars that honestly it's just worth it this is not the same as getting the outlander ES in the base stream where you already get uh, a decent amount of tech, basic tech that you would want. This um, car does not shine, the base trim. I really wish I could get my hands on uh, on a premium. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. There's, there are a few too many buttons that are empty here um, for a premium sedan. However, it is still a decent value. I just would never 
I would never go for the base trim myself. On the bright side, we do have this very nice looking wood trim, wood trim on the steering wheel, which is kind of the staple of a premium slash luxury sedans. And it really reminds me of my RL that I had that I dearly miss. Um, but yeah, we have the wood trim on the gear shifter. We have the wood trim on the panels, uh, all across the doors, kind of all over the car. It is a very nice touch and it's very good looking wood. It's very pleasant looking and it's not too light. I like the shade, I like the grain. I would assume that it's real because it is in the steering wheel and it looks exactly the same as the steering wheel. So I'd assume it's real and it's aging quite well. This car does have 210, uh, 214,000 kilometers. And this wood looks really good for the age and the mileage, unlike some of the other parts of the car. But again, I am not going to fault this car for based on this specific example that is very high mileage, right? That would not be fair to the car. Um, but a lot of the things in this car are working well. The AC is a bit weak when you're idling. I wish it was a bit stronger. Again, could just be the mileage, could just be the age of the car. Um, the buttons, some of the buttons feel a bit budget. Um, like for example, the volume uh, toggle here and the cruise control toggles here. We do have a very basic screen in the gauge cluster. The gauge cluster is mainly analog, but we do have this little um, Tetris looking screen <laughs> um, just in the middle. Um, you really want to opt for the technology package with that larger LED screen that looks, uh, LCD screen that looks so much better. You can also tell that they tried to make this interior feel a bit more uh, premium and a bit more luxurious by the implementation of the cheap and easy hack, which is just adding an analog clock in the middle of the center console. It looks fine, it fits well with the entire uh, with the entire center console, but it does look a bit cheap the closer you look at it. So don't, just don't look too close at it. Just admire it from your driving position. One other thing that I do quite like in the interior is just the layout of the buttons. The HVAC controls are, for the most part, pretty easy to use and pretty logical. Um, I do wish that the buttons were a bit different size or they were a bit more separated from each other because it's, you know, you're going down the center console and it's HVAC controls, HVAC controls, hazard lights, passenger airbag off, HVAC controls. Um, so it's a bit, <laughs> It's a, bit, it's a bit of an odd clumping of uh, buttons, but they really did make have to. Uh, they had to make the best with what they had and the space they had. Down here we have this giant empty slot for the. I believe this would be the electronic parking brake, and the two giant empty buttons uh, that would be for cold seats. And it's it's one of those reminders that will just taunt you at all times every time you look down and you realize that there's these two giant buttons that would be something very important and useful if you just spent a little more money alas this will be a constant reminder of how cheap you are one other odd thing that i quite like that i noticed accidentally is um, how quick how quickly the windows roll down and up only the front windows are automatic the rear are just electric so if you press it down look at how quick it just detracts genuine look this is genuinely impressive like this is three seconds or less <laughs> it's one of those things that nobody cares about but i find it quite cool the headrests and other oddities that i noticed completely accidentally you can uh, you can you can regulate them forward and backwards in this odd trajectory if you push push it pull it all the way Here to the front they'll just retract, but then you can fix it in different positions. There's one There's two and there's a third position too. Wait, hold on one two Three, okay How comfortable do I look and then you just retract it Fascinating. The infotainment is I it's fine. I have I don't have too many complaints about it. It is really a product of its time. It's dated by now, by by today's standards, very much dated, but it works okay. The phone works well. 
and the Bluetooth connects right away. One thing that I'm not the biggest fan of is the Urivri camera. Um, it's not bad, it's not terrible. Uh, the resolution is pretty good, but I just wish it showed a little bit more uh, if you're catching my drift. In the back seats, uh, the story of the front seats really continues, right? Um, usually you would have more stuff, but you have less stuff because it's a base frame and because you don't have the technology package, etc. So we don't get the heated rear seats, uh, but we do get this very nice and very comfortable armrest. The leather is pretty good. We do get some, wow, some very loud cup holders in the rear. The rear seats do not fold down, but we do get this little window so we can access the trunk or push something along through. I'm 5'6", the seat is adjusted to me, so there's lots of space, big amount of space. Definitely another four inches above my head. So I think anybody that is, I would say 6'3 and under should be perfectly comfortable in here. Now the trunk of the Cadenza is fittingly big, uh, definitely more than comfortable for two or three bodies in here you know and you could uh, probably confuse it for a studio apartment downtown toronto for fifteen hundred dollars a month very nice okay let's get behind the wheel now is the driving experience enough to offset all the other imperfections in the lackluster tech? Uh, well, almost, almost. The drive itself is very comfortable. And you notice right away that it's a premium vehicle. As soon as you get into one of these, either a luxury sedan or a premium sedan, at least the Asian ones, you notice it right away. Just how separated you feel from the road, how separated you feel, how isolated you feel from the, from the entire environment, how quiet it is, the way it handles, right? And the way it handles is not really a good thing because usually that means that there's zero steering feel, which this is the case here. The steering wheel is a little bit too light, which is also the case here. But the way it just makes you feel and the way it makes you want to just waft and just relax and have your thoughts drift away. It's, it's, it's therapeutic in a way, the way these cars drive. Um, and honestly, the Cadenza is not, not an exception. The engine is pretty quiet, but then when you get on it, it you can hear it and it sounds pretty good. One good thing about the driving experience, well, not one, there's a bunch of things, fantastic things about the driving experience, but I think my favorite thing is just how it eats up the bumps and how you feel like you just waft and, and you feel like the world around you, it doesn't matter. Most things that the road can throw at you, it just takes with such ease and it keeps you comfortable. I wish my butt was getting cooled right now with some cold seats, but it isn't but nevertheless i thoroughly enjoy the drive i really like the way this car drives and one good thing about the drive also is the engine is just powerful enough to get you out of most situations but it's not intimidating in any way it has just enough power surprising amount of power it's not going to like shock you or scare your passenger necessarily unless they're not used to anything over 200 horsepower. And the, one of the funniest things about the engine as well and the way it delivers the power is that because it all goes to the rear wheel, uh, sorry, front wheels, and because it is a big heavy sedan, this thing will light up the front tires <laughs> if you turn off the traction control. It really will. And it's kind of hilarious. Let's try right now. No, no. See, the, uh, the gearbox let me down, unfortunately. But we're going uphill right now, so we'll try that again. And until we get there, this gearbox is so damn lazy and slow. And I think the gearbox really lets the engine down. 
every time you mash the gas, you want to accelerate, it's like, oh, what's up? What? Oh, oh, accelerate. Okay, fine, all right. Uh... <laughs> it's goofy fun. You know, it's goofy fun in a sedan that, you know, isn't inherently that fun necessarily. There isn't too much fun in this entire experience. It's a, it's a, <laughs> just a little bit. Again, it's not gonna do a burnout, but you know, it's, it's something, right? And then as soon as we are back on the road, we can turn the traction control back on and just cruise smooth, just glide to your destination. Play some tunes. Speaking of tunes, the speakers are not good. I I don't know. Maybe it's just the the technology of the time. It's hard to tell. I but again, I I've heard some very good speakers from 2015 or even before that. But these Infinity brand speakers, they you know they could have gone beyond, but they just went Infinity. To wrap it up, Kia Cadenza. Not the most inspiring vehicle. To be honest, I like the drive. I like the way it drives, but it's, I don't feel like it's one of those memorable premium cars or luxury cars. It's been clearly reliable enough to get to 214,000 kilometers, but other than that, it's, it's okay. It serves its purpose well, but it's not going, I don't think it's going to be the one that gets away. One more thing. 98% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. Subscribe, like, comment, like, dislike, whatever you want. We're all about honesty and integrity here. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.